Ringo TV Reactions. Back at you again with another one. Make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe. Let's get down to business. So, what we're dealing with is the topic of Devin Franklin. Yeah, that's right. Devin Franklin. Proof. Devin Franklin is a false teacher after leading women astray in this shocking video. Yeah, that's right. You see, a lot of you, you know of Devin Franklin because of his previous relationship with Megan Good. And see, what you have to understand about these charlatans is that they're snake oil salesmen. They pander towards women. They don't give them the truth. And consequently, we... We live in a society where everybody is just bombarded with lies. Um, the Christian church is filled with wolves in sheep's clothing, men that they don't stand for anything. They don't follow God. They, you know, they're led by their feelings and emotions. And this is the case with uh, Devin Franklin. I'm going to let you listen to some footage. We're going to break it down. And I'm going to show you a lot of scriptures, especially you ladies. Make sure that you're tuning in and um, you put on your thinking caps because you're being pandered to by this wolf named Devin Franklin. Very, very dangerous man. This is a very this is the most dangerous man in America right now. This guy. Devin the most dangerous man in America because he allowed the devil to speak through him. And all he's doing is filling women up with lies. I went to his TikTok. You don't see no men in the comments, just nothing but women. Women, 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 women. Loving all the lies. And all these women are single and on their way to hell because they're not being led by a righteous man. Devin Franklin is not a righteous man. And we got the proof, the shocking proof. So that being said, let's get this video prepared so that we can get to work, do what we got to do. Um, make sure you get the likes up on the video as you come in. Peace and blessings of the chat, everybody coming into the show. Now, this is going to be a master class lesson, so make sure you pay attention. I am going to be teaching. I'm going to be teaching a whole lot. And I want to pretty much give you all of the information directly from the Bible so that you can understand that Devon is lying to you. Everything that we're going to listen to is all lies. And it's, it's sad. Because women, they're, they're so easy to deceive in today's day. You ladies, man, you ladies are so easy. You're so easy to mislead. It's, it's shocking. It's really shocking that anybody can come online and deceive you with no problem. And you just accept it because you, you're led by your emotions. So what we're going to do is we're going to break this thing down for you. Give me one second real quick because I, I'm tired of this, y'all. I'm really tired of the, the false prophets and these these charlatans and these snake oil salesmen, these 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 guys that just pander towards women. I, listen, ladies, throughout this stream, I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. Do you understand me? Ladies, throughout this stream, I am not going to tell you what you want to hear. I'm going to tell you what does say of the most high. I'm going to open up the book and I'm going to show you what it says. So if you're a woman and you want truth, then tune in. If you're one of them type of sisters that wear your feelings on your shoulders, I suggest you just leave and go to another platform where they could tickle your ear and tell you you're a queen and a goddess and mother earth and all of that nonsense while you out here sleeping around with a thousand different guys. 
Yeah, okay. How you a queen, a mother earth, a goddess, and you're doing all of this great stuff, but you're out there giving your body to different guys. Please let that make sense. Make it make sense. Because um, I'm trying to figure this out because, you know, this is the American image right here. The bride and the groom getting married, and it makes it seem as if though, as a man, you're getting with this pure vessel of honor. First of all, Megan Good was for the streets. Let's just call it what it is. <clears throat> Megan Good has always been for the streets. Um, she has been passed around in the industry. So it's not a surprise that Devin got with a Jezebel and then their marriage failed. Let it make sense. So this man is in no position to even preach to anybody, especially about relationships. See, ladies, if you want any advice when it comes to relationships, you're going to have to listen to people that actually have a relationship long term. Someone that have the success, you know, the success you need and desire because you're not getting it with the pookies and ray rays that you've been dealing with all these times. You understand? So, again, we're going to get to this tape because this guy right here is the most dangerous man in America. You ladies need to stir clear from Devin Franklin. Every word that come out of his mouth is from the devil. Every word. He is satanic. He's misleading you ladies. And you're never going to have success following a guy like him. And I got the proof. So that being said, let's get to the tapes. Let's get this tape rolling so we can do what we need to do and um, break this thing down. So we're going to let the video play and then we're going to break it down. Right. So let's let's go. Not after your time. The enemy is not after your money. The enemy is after your attention. Because wherever our attention goes is where our emotions flow. This is really interesting. In verse 22, this is the creation of the woman, Eve. But you don't hear Eve coming into the earth saying, where's my man? <laughs> huh? Did, did, am I reading it right? It says, the man said. Eve came into the earth. Watch this. Adam was the one who was broken. Eve came into the earth whole. She had both ribs. Society wants women to believe you're broken if you're not with somebody. But God says the woman came into the earth complete, not seeking or needing anyone or anything. I don't know who I'm talking to today. But you got to stand in your power. You are one of one. There's nothing wrong with you if you're not with somebody. You as a woman are complete. You're whole. Ah, and I got to say it because I'm tired of us supporting a culture that tries to make women think there's something wrong with them if they're not married. It's just not true. The enemy is not after your time. The enemy is not after your money. The enemy is after your attention. Because wherever our attention goes is where our emotions flow. Do you understand, ladies and gentlemen? This man is a false prophet. He said that women come to a man whole. That's a lie. He twisted the scriptures. Misled everyone with lies. Why? Because... He don't know how to read. First of all, he's reading from the NIV. You know, I would stay away from that version of the Bible. Right. But what's so crazy about this is the woman was made from a man's rib. But he's making it seem as if though as a man, we're broken, but the woman is not. That's blasphemy. That's what you call pandering to women. I mean, if we could just, just think about what's going on here with what he just said. It is so disturbing because what he just did is he elevated women above the man, basically telling the woman, there's nothing wrong with you. You're whole. You're not broken like these guys out here. These guys, they need a woman. But you ladies, 
there's nothing wrong with you being single coming from the man that got a divorce. A man that got a divorce is telling you ladies that you had both ribs, but the man, he's broken. When you came from the man's rib. You understand? Let's listen to that madness again, fam. After your time. The enemy is not after your money. The enemy is after your attention. Because wherever our attention goes is where our emotions flow. This is really interesting. In verse 22, this is the creation of the woman, Eve. But you don't hear Eve coming into the earth saying, where's my man? <laughs> huh? Am I reading it right? No, you're not. It says the man said. Eve came into the earth. Watch this. Adam was the one who was broken. Wow. Eve came into the earth whole. That's a lie. What is this guy talking about? This man just said that you ladies came into the earth broken. Woman, let me make something cl very clear to you ladies. You're the one who brought sin into the world. Because you're the one that's broken. You're the one who is the weaker vessel, according to the Bible. Do you understand me? We got a plethora, plethora of scriptures that we got to bring out. A whole pile of scriptures. We're going to overdose you with scriptures. Because this guy right here is a demon. This guy right here is a demon straight from hell. Leading all of you ladies astray. Any woman that is listening to Devon, you're lost. Genesis chapter 2, verse 22 to 24. And the rib, which the Lord God hath taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. Think about what's just, think about what I just read there, because this false pastor, if you notice, he's not reading the Bible. The Bible says, and the rib, which the Lord God hath taken from man, so he taken a rib from man to do what? He and he made a woman. So the rib of Adam was used to make a woman. And he brought this woman unto the man to do what? To serve. Not the other way around. Like you ladies think it is in today's day. You think a man is here to serve you. No, your job is to serve a man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones. Notice where you come from, woman. You're not the goddess of the earth. You're not mother earth. You're not any of that BS that the world lied to you about. You came from a man. And Adam said, this is now my bone. This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called. She shall be called woman. Why are you going to be called a woman? Woman? Because she was taken out of man. Do you see that? Think about this. The woman brought sin into the earth because she listened to the serpent who beguiled her and told her that if she take of the forbidden fruit, she will be wise as God. Think about that. But she's whole. No, she's weak. And it's something you have to understand. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother, his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they both shall be one flesh. But this guy said that you guys, you ladies, that you're not whole. Let's go through a whole load of scriptures. Ecclesiasticus chapter 25, verse 24. Of the woman came the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. Yeah. 
All of the problems we're facing right now in today's day is because of women. Right now, women are out of pocket. Right now, you got women that are watching my live upset because I'm saying all of the problems we have today is because of women. Relationship problems, women. Issues on the job, women. Sexual harassment, women. All of these policies, women. The Bible says that women brought sin in the world, not a man. So how could someone that is whole bring sin into the world? Let that make sense. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. What? Dwell with them according to knowledge, given honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. Does that sound like somebody that's whole? The Bible says, give an honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, not the stronger. Who would be the stronger if the wife is the weaker? Put it in the chat. If the woman is considered to be looked at as the weaker vessel, who is the stronger vessel? Who's the stronger vessel? Do anybody have that answer? I want to know. Because the scripture is very clear, it says, give an honor unto the wife as the weaker vessel. So who's the stronger? Shouldn't take that long to give an answer. Yeah, the man. Men are the stronger. But in today's culture, do women think that? No, women believe they're equal to men. And this is why none of you ladies have a husband and never will, because you don't know how to play your position as the weaker vessel. You want to be a boss. You want to be a gangster in the relationship. You want to make your own money. You don't even want the man to provide anymore. You want to provide. So there's no incentive of a man wifing you up. All he's going to do is use you for recreational use. That's it. But yet you get upset with me when I act and talk these talks because you don't want to face the reality that you are your worst nightmare. You don't want marriage. You want to date. You want to live your best life. Okay, cool. Recreational use. The Bible says men dwell with women according to knowledge. Ladies, men are the ones who are supposed to teach you. You cannot come to a man perfect. No, a man has to dwell with you according to knowledge. You don't come to a man whole. You come to a man broken. You Come to a man with the trauma and the drama from all your past relationships. You come to a man with all your daddy issues. You. You come to a man with all sorts of issues. Seeing a therapist. Mad at your father. Mad at your ex. Baby daddy mama drama. You come to a man with all sorts of mess. You don't come to a man whole, because if you did, you would be a wife. You would be a wife, but you're not, because you're a mess. And this is why the Bible says, likewise, ye husbands. Notice it says ye husbands, not boyfriends, not sneaky links, not jump offs, not side pieces. It says ye husbands. How many of you women have a husband? Up crickets, just as I thought. None. But you're not a virgin. But you get upset with me when I share this truth. When you made the choice to sleep with the guys that you dealt with. Not respecting your own body. And this is why you were used as recreational use. Why? Because the man that you dwelt with didn't dwell with you according to knowledge. See, if a woman is around me, all she's going to get fed is this truth. She's going to get fed knowledge and understanding of the word of the most high. That's all I'm going to feed her. Knowledge. So that she can be the woman I need. Do you understand me? Dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as the weaker vessel. You do not come to a man whole. You come to a man broken. Do you understand? And a man have to edify you. A man got to teach you. A man got to train you up in this truth so that you could be equipped as the woman he need. 
and what happens if a man don't? And as being heirs together by the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. This is what happens when a man does not teach his wife truth. And this is why, this is why, ladies and gentlemen, this man on the screen and his so-called ex, Megan Good, had a divorce. Do you understand me? This is why they had a divorce. Because he did not dwell with her according to knowledge. He didn't. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13 to 15. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Wow. 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 But what did Pastor Porkchop tell you? Pastor Porkchop said that the woman is whole and the woman is this and praising the woman, put the woman above the man. The Bible says Adam was not deceived. The devil did not come to Adam. He went to the weaker vessel. Why do you think the devil went to Eve? Because he knew she's the weaker vessel. He knew he can get into her feelings and her emotions. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Now, again, it says the woman was in the transgression. Ecclesiasticus chapter 25, verse 24 that we read earlier. Of the woman came the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. That scripture goes in line with this. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression, notwithstanding Check this out, ladies. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved. How? How are you ladies going to be saved in today's day? All you so-called women that claim you in the truth, all you women that come to my platform saying shalom, shalom, all you women that act like, oh, you're such a good woman, you're single, you're this, you're that, BS. The Bible says notwithstanding, she shall be saved in child barren so if you're a woman and you're not with a righteous man bearing children you are not saved wow you're not you're not if you're a woman at the sound of my voice and you are not bearing children for a righteous man, you are not saved. That's a fact. You're on your way to the lake of fire. The Bible says, And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in the faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Ladies, if you are not the wife or concubine to a righteous man bearing children, you are not saved and you will be in that lake of fire and brimstone. Think about that. This is serious, fam. This is very, very serious. Women are saved and childbearing. But see what happens in today's day. A lot of you ladies, right? Rather than you getting with a righteous man and bear children, you get with Pookie. Right after you get pregnant and you have the baby, what do you normally do? You, you abandon the relationship. Do you know, guys, women abandon the relationships every single time? Do you know that? Do you know how many times women will get pregnant by a guy? Everything is good, right? Once she delivers the baby, the next thing is she abandons the relationship. She breaks up. 
Go ask all your male co-workers that have children. They'll tell you the horror stories. I've seen this time and time again. Women continually break up with the baby daddy right after giving birth. Within two months after giving birth, they break up. Look around, you guys. Ask all the brothers that got kids, and they'll tell you the nightmare stories of their baby mama. Right after she delivered the baby, she got rid of him. Didn't want to be with him no more. Why? Because she don't want to be saved. Because what the scripture says, the scripture says, notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. Okay, she bared a child. She bared a child, Ringo, so isn't she saved? No, not, not necessarily. Why? The Bible says, if they continue in the faith. If they continue. If they continue in the faith after bearing children and charity and holiness with sobriety. Women don't do that. They have the baby get the seed from the man, put the man on child support to collect, and they abandon the relationship entirely. That's what they do. It's crazy. This is what they do, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get more. Genesis chapter 2, verse 19 to 22. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field, and every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever, whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle, and to all the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found and help meet, for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God hath taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Wow. You don't see scriptures of the Most High saying he took a rib from a woman and brought a woman a man. No, the woman is here to serve the man. That's what her job is for. But that pork chop eating pastor is misguiding all of you sisters. And this is why you're never going to be successful in relationships. I promise you. The majority of you ladies that are listening to me right now will remain single for the rest of your natural life. I promise you. For the rest of your natural life, you will be single. And you will be sleeping around. Because you don't listen to me. I'm already done trying to guide you. You don't want the guidance. If you're not getting with a righteous man, you will be recreational use. If you're not submitted to a man of authority in this truth, you will be led astray by the devil. You can act as independent as you want. I promise you, you will have zero success in relationships. I've talked to so many different women and it's the same nonsense. Their stories is identical. The same thing. Pure madness. And they're never going to have peace because they don't want to follow God. Again, she shall be saved in childbearing if she continue in the faith. Are you ladies continuing in the faith or you're just religious? Think about that. Let's get to these scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 9. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. Wow. Think about that. Isn't that amazing? Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman 
for the man. <laughs> but what do women think? Women think that they're the prize. Ladies, you're not no prize. You're a vessel that was created by the Most High to be help meet for the man. Because every other beast of the field had a helpmate. But the man, there was nothing for him. And that was your purpose. But you don't want that purpose. You want a man to serve you. And this is why you're single and recreational use right now to some guy. To several guys out there. I promise you, the majority of women right now listening to my voice is recreational use in these streets. It doesn't matter how fine you think you are. You could think you God's gift to the earth. You are recreational use to somebody right now. Right now, somebody's using you for recreational use. Don't tell me you're engaged. You are recreational use. That's it. And you know it, too. Because, again, if I ask you ladies, what's your body count? All of a sudden now, you don't want to talk. All of a sudden now, I get the crickets. Again, if you're sexually liberated, right? If you're so independent and you're free and you're confident and you're not ashamed about anything, why it's so difficult as a woman in today's day to let a man know how many men you done slept with? Because you know you're not happy about it. Because it's embarrassing, and being that you done did dirt, uh, you're not even built to be in a relationship because you're unable to pair bond. And this is why you're single right now. See, Pastor Pork Chop Devin, he's not going to give you this truth the way I am. See, if I had a church, right, and I'm pastor in a church, none of you ladies would attend my church. You know why? Because you're going to be in your feelings all day because of your sin. See, you're out there sinning every day with different guys. And you're not submitted unto the most high. You're just not. You know, you're just wasting your time out here. Looking for attention. You know, that's what's going on. Because that's what the majority of women do today. You know, I see somebody in the chat begging for attention. Like, literally, they're just begging for attention. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and it just goes to show that, that even that person in the chat, they don't even got no man. Because if they had a man, they would go ask their husband. What does the Bible say? It talks about how if a woman is to learn anything, she's to go home and ask her husband. But see, a lot of you ladies, you don't realize that you, you expose the fact that you don't got no man. And most of you women that complain, you're older women. The younger women are not even watching my show. They're too busy right now getting a back blown out somewhere in this world. It's you older women, 35, 45, 55, 65. You're the ones that normally be in my chat room complaining and, and being in your feelings and telling me how much I'm a male chauvinist and I hate women and all this dumb stuff. This is why you don't got no man, because you're not going to be able to coexist with a man, because once a man regulate you and begin to teach you and rebuke you, that is when you're going to file for divorce. Why? Because you suffer from daddy issues. Your father wasn't in the home because your mom was in them streets. See, just like you're in the streets right now, your mom was in the streets too, and your grandmother, all your aunts too. That's why they all have kids out of wedlock and none of them are married. Can't you see? Are you not entertained? Look at your family tree. Look at all your relatives, all the females. All of them got kids. None of them got husbands. You don't see it as a problem? You don't see it as a problem? The problem is you ladies don't want to listen to real men. When real men speak, you say that they're uh, misogynistic. You say they're male chauvinist pig. You say that they hate women. No, you just mad because you weren't raised with your daddy. You understand? Your daddy wasn't home. And you mad at the world. Blame your mom. See, your mom didn't tell you that you were actually a one-night stand. She didn't tell you that part. She didn't tell you that you were born in sin. You were not born in a relationship where a man actually loved your mom and wanted to have a baby. No, she, you were born in sin, created in iniquity. That's how you were formed in this world. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians eleven nine, 9, neither was the man created for the woman. See, ladies... Men were not created for the woman, but the woman for the man. You ladies 
were created for the man. And that's just the way it is. There's no way around it. So if you know you were created for the man, why haven't you submitted yourself to a righteous man yet? Come on now. Why haven't all of you ladies that claim you rock with God, that you're in the Bible, shalom, shalom, because I get tired of seeing you ladies come into my chat talking about shalom, brother. We love you. You don't love nothing. Please stop. Please stop embarrassing yourself. You don't love the righteous brothers. You hate the righteous brothers. Because if you really love the righteous brothers, you would gravitate towards the righteous brothers. But you're not doing that. You're just wasting your life away. Again, ladies, if you're not bearing children for a righteous man, your life is meaningless. All of this nonsense of, well, marriage is not for every for everyone. You know, some of us, you know, we, we you know, we were, we weren't born to be married. So, OK, if you weren't born to be married, woman, then why would the Bible says neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man? What's the point of you having a womb that can bear children if you weren't created to bear children? Don't give me that nonsense. Every last one of you, every last one of you ladies were born to bear children for a righteous man, but you're not doing that. You're bearing children for the devil. All your baby daddies are in prison, out in them streets, wilding out, acting a fool. But the righteous man, you're supposed to be carrying his seed, but you're not doing that. It's like you carrying the devil's seed. Why? Because you've been contaminated in the garden by the serpent. So because of your relationship and connection to the devil, this is why you're only attracted to toxic men. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. You were created for the man, woman. Stop this independent nonsense. You are wasting your time and you're playing yourself. This is why, guys, you're not supposed to be chasing women around. I'm not chasing none of you ladies. I'm never chasing none of you ladies. Because you ladies, you have a brain, you know who are the true high. So what the fuck you waiting for? You playing yourself. You playing yourself. You got so many women claiming God, claiming how much of a good woman they are, and they don't even have a man. Let it make sense, y'all. How could you have all of these women claiming they righteous good women, but they're not introducing themselves to righteous men. What are you ladies doing? What are you waiting on? Because we know you out there getting it in with somebody, and I can guarantee it is not a righteous man. You be on the job messing around with your co-worker. He not a righteous man. So why are you in the back room getting it in with him? See, how do, how do I know that? How do I know you ladies that claim God be at your job getting it in with your male coworker? He's not righteous. He don't even follow the Bible. But you getting it in with him. Shame on you. Wow. And you know why? You know why you're doing these things? Because you listen to pastors like Devin. Pastors that tell you it's okay to be single. Nothing is wrong with you being single. Woman, if you're single, why are you having sex with different men? If you're single. If you're a woman and you're single, why are your legs is open if you're single? You shouldn't be having sexual relations if you're single. Why are you doing this? Why are you allowing men to defile you? Why are you allowing men to use you as recreational use? Do you not love yourself? Why you ladies don't love yourselves? Anytime you open your legs, woman, for a man and allow him to skeet skeet up inside you and you are not his wife, you don't love yourself. You don't. Because no man can force himself on you. You yield your members to the man. So don't say that, oh, these men are dogs and these men are taking advantage of women and these men are... No man can take advantage of no woman. 
A woman yields her members to a man by opening up her legs. If a woman didn't want to have no relations with a man, she would not submit herself. So save me the tears. Any man you get with and he use you, you were using him. And in the process, you became recreational use. And now you got the trauma and the drama and the pain and the misery from those relationships. So why would Devin tell you that nothing is wrong with you and you come to the table whole? He's trying to make you believe that you're perfect, that when you come to the table, you're bringing everything right. And the man is full of problems. That's basically what he's doing. And this is a man that got a divorce. This is a man that couldn't even keep his house together. This is a man that couldn't even keep his wife satisfied. This is sad, fam. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 to 27 says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Ladies, did you get that part? See, a lot of you ladies, you talk so much about how you want a man, you want a good man, you want a man making money, you want this, you want that. The Bible says, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. How? As unto the Lord. This is how I know that the majority of you ladies that claim you're good women and you follow the most high, you're full of shit. Because if you really were submitted unto the Lord, you would have a fucking husband. If you were truly submitted to the Lord, you would have a husband. Because it says, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. How? How do you submit yourself to a husband, ladies, as unto the Lord? Uh-oh. So you mean to tell me, if a woman is serving the Lord, that's how she's supposed to serve her husband? Yes, that's right. Are you ladies doing that? Absolutely not. This is how I know none of you ladies are in the truth. None of you are. I know you're not. You can't fool me because I'm in this truth. And the Bible says the tree is known by the fruits. The tree is known by his or her fruit. The Bible says wives submit unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. If you as a woman were truly submitted unto the Lord, it would be exceptionally easy for you to submit to a man. And this is proof that you don't follow God and you don't know the Bible at all. None of you. I'm talking to all, not some, not a little, all of you ladies under the sound of my voice. None of you that are single are following God. Because if you were submitted unto the Lord, it would be exceptionally easy to locate a quality, righteous man. Why? Because you're submitted to the Lord. And if you're submitted to the, to the Lord, how is it so difficult for you? Oh, all these men out here ain't no good. That's a lie. That's a lie. You know that's a lie. You're the one who is wicked. That's why you got so much problems. See what I'm saying? Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is what? For the husband is what? For the husband is below the wife? For the husband is behind the wife. For the husband is the head of the wife. How? Even as Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body. So ladies, who's your savior in the relationship? Talk to me. The Bible says, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church and is the savior of the body. Okay, ladies, if you have a husband, who is your savior in the relationship? Who is your savior? Who's your fucking savior? Because when you have a righteous man in your life, ladies, he's going to set order. He's not there to put you down. He's there to protect you. And his authority is going to be stern. Do you understand me? He's a man. He's not a woman. He's a man. 
And we're going to also do a, a review of another video I seen today. Very, very important video. I might do that video later on. Very, very important video. But ladies, when you have a righteous man, he's going to guide you. He's going to love you. He's going to take care of you. He's going to be there for all his kids. See, the problems that you've been having with all of these ninjas out here that you've been dealing with is that they have shaped your thinking on what a man is. When those guys aren't men of the most high. So consequently, because of your trauma, you see all men as the same. So when I talk this talk, you don't hear the righteous power of the most high flowing. What you hear is just another black man talking ish. And this is why you will never experience a righteous man, because once you have a righteous man in your life, he's going to lead you. Why? Because he's the savior of your body. This is why the Bible says to submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. The same way you Christian women claim you be worshiping God in church and praising the Lord and doing all of this. Why you ain't praising and worshiping your man? Uh oh. Uh oh. Why you ain't why you ain't praising the ground your man walk on since the Bible says as unto the Lord. Oh, you don't do that, right? Oh, you don't you don't believe in calling your your husband Lord as a. Uh, Sarah did Abraham. You, you don't believe in that, right? She called him Lord. Some women call their, their, their husbands master. Some of you ladies see that as degrading. Not realizing that he's the savior of the body. The Bible says for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Listen, there is rank. And the most high put the man as the head of the wife. So he's the savior in the earth over you and these, and these children. And this is why as a woman, you got to serve your husband as unto the Lord. You're supposed to make sure you're cooking for him, loving him, cherishing him. Why? Because if that man was to pass away anytime soon, your family going to suffer. Your family is going to suffer greatly because his leadership, protection, prosperity, provisions, was sustaining the entire house and you're going to miss him dearly. You're going to miss every day. You're going to cry every day because that man was everything. And when he's gone, he's gone and you're never going to get another one again. And this is why a lot of you ladies are missing out right now because you keep getting mad at the messenger. You keep getting mad at me when you should be getting mad at yourself. Now think about this. We're talking about this false pastor, but I got to bring out these scriptures before we cook the pastor. I got to educate you with the truth because the pastor, he's not teaching you nothing. You see? The Bible says, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church and is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is sub subject unto Christ, uh-oh, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Uh-oh. Women have a problem with that. In everything, Ringo? Obviously, if you have a brain, everything righteous. Not things that are wicked. If your husband says, hey, submit to me, go rob in a bank. Of course not. Use your brain. You submit to a man who is righteous. And whatever he does that is righteous, you submit yourself to that. Husbands, love your wives. Uh-oh, how do we love our women, brothers? Even as Christ also loved the church. Uh-oh. So now in order to know how to love a woman, a brother got to go and see how did the Messiah love the church. Uh-oh. So it's not just a feeling and an emotion. It's an action. It's a verb. Uh-oh. So let me get this straight. So as a husband, I got to love my wives even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. So that means I'm a living sacrifice, just like the Messiah gave himself for the church. I got to now sacrifice myself for my family. That's what you're supposed to do as a man. You're supposed to love your wives. You're supposed to work, provide, teach, edify, instruct, rebuke, correct. This is what you're supposed to do as a man. That is he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of by the word. Uh-oh, I thought women come to a man whole. The Bible says that he might sanctify and cleanse it. 
with the washing by the word. That's what you're supposed to do with the word of the most high towards your women, guys. Remember, dwell with them according to knowledge. You use the knowledge of the most high to sanctify and cleanse these women of their filth. Because when they come to you, they come to you damaged, broken, traumatized, all sorts of issues. This is why I always suggest that when you get with a woman, take her to the park on a date where you just vibe and talk. No dinner date. The date is at a park. You take a walk, stroll and have deep conversations and you talk in a manner to make the woman open up. Let her talk about herself, her issues, her past, different things. And you you really connect with her, her spirit. You make her cry by the way you communicate. Make her get emotional. That's when you know you're tapping in. That, that means that you really, really make an impact. She never experienced nothing like that, fam. She'll never forget that date. Why? Because that conversation you and her had was life-changing. She never had an intimate conversation. Most of these women never, ever experience an intimate conversation with a man. Never in their life. All they do is get with a man, exchange numbers, they're at the telly getting a back blown out, and that's it. Next minute, they're having babies. Pure drama. You understand? That he might present to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that he, it should be holy and without blemish. That is how you're supposed to have your women, guys. When you teach your women the word of the Most High, because these, these false teachers, these false pastors, they're not teaching these women nothing. They're leading them astray. The Bible says that when you teach these women with the washing of the word, what is it for? That he might present to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any, th any such things, that it should be holy and without blemish. That's how your women should be, brothers. Any woman that you get with should be without blemish, without spot, without wrinkles without no drama, trauma, issues, nothing. Why? Because you're giving them, thus saith the most high, you're giving them the truth. Now, the truth is always going to be harsh. The truth is going to be sharp. See, if you're a woman and you really, really desire to change and desire to do better, then my tone don't bother you. Why? Because you had a father in your life. But see, now, if you never had a father in your life, then guess what? When I speak, all you get is negative energy. Why? Because your daddy wasn't in the house to regulate you. This is why you were in the streets bending over. This is why you were out smoking weed. This is why you were in them streets with Pookie and Ray Ray doing God know what. Why? Because you had no discipline. There was no father there to set order. Your mom was in the streets too. And because she didn't love you, she let you go in the streets and destroy your life. That's why you got pregnant early. These are facts. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 20. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and saith, I have done no wickedness. That's how the majority of you ladies are today. You believe you are above reproach. You're above criticism and nobody could talk about you. And if anybody do, they're a misogynistic. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth, wipeth her mouth and saith, I have done no wickedness. This is how they are, guys. They really believe that they have done no wickedness. You try to point things out to them, they act like you're wrong for pointing it out. Sirach, chapter 25, verse 17 and 19. The wickedness of a woman changeth her face, uh-oh, and darkeneth her countenance like sackcloth. Her husband shall sit among the neighbors and when he heareth it, shall sigh bitterly. All wickedness is but a little to the wickedness of a woman. Let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. Do you see that? This Bible warned men about women more than anything in this world. This Bible have hundreds of scriptures warning men about wicked women. And this is why. This is why we have evil in the world. And see, a lot of you ladies, you keep getting upset with me. Rather than you sit down in class and learn something for a change, 
because I don't know you personally. I do not know you personally. Why do you get upset with me when I speak and I don't know you? I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you understand not to listen to Devin Franklin because he's a false teacher and a very dangerous man. But at the same time, I got to use my platform to educate you. I got to give you the truth that a man is supposed to give you. See, if you are my woman, this is what I'm going to be teaching you. Any woman of mine, all she getting from me is truth. You, you will change as a woman if you're around me. I guarantee you, you're not going to be the same. There's no way you could be a woman and around me and be the same woman. There's no way. Because I demand a certain level of excellence. You understand? I, I demand it. I have standards. And I expect you to follow them. And I expect you to grow. There's no way you could be around me as a woman and be foolish and not understand, you know, the basics of life. It doesn't even make any sense. You know, you're going to learn up, down, left, right. You're going to know what's right from wrong. This is what righteous men are supposed to do. The Bible says the wickedness of a woman changes her face. How many times have you seen wicked women? It changes their face. Look a sexy red. Look at that Suzuki samurai chick. Satanic fam. Evil. Their whole face has changed because of their wickedness. They look like demons. The Bible says the wickedness of a woman changes her face and darkeneth her countenance like sackcloth. Her husband shall sit among his neighbors and when he heareth it shall sigh bitterly. You know why? He's embarrassed. His wife constantly embarrass him. You understand? Just like Megan Good was an embarrassment to Devin Franklin. How could he get with a woman like that that was for the streets? Out of all the women he could have got with, he got with a woman that was in the streets. Now, for all you know, Devin might be a decent sister. You know what I mean? She might be. Today, I don't know. She might be. But my point is, she was for the streets. And he got with her because that's the kind of women he loved. Women that are in the streets. You see, all wickedness is but a little to the wickedness of a woman. Let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. First Peter chapter three, verse seven. Likewise, ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. As being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. You got to dwell with them according to knowledge, guys. You got to dwell with them according to knowledge. That's the only way you and a woman is going to be in a long term relationship. If there's no knowledge coming from these scriptures to feed your woman's mind, she is going to be pretty much doing the things of the devil in the relationship. And it won't be long before you get a divorce or you end up putting her away with a writing of divorce or whatever the case is. So now, getting back to the video clip. Those of you that are now coming in, we're talking about false teacher Devin Franklin and the things he had to say regarding relationships, which very, very shocking because he's pandering towards women, leading them astray with lies. Check it out. After your time, the enemy is not after your money. The enemy is after your attention. Because wherever our attention goes is where our emotions flow. And that's exactly what happens with women, not men. He's pandering towards women. See, the thing he just told you there, ladies and gentlemen, is the very thing he's using on you. That's what he's using on you. Listen to it. After your time. He said the enemy is, is not coming after your time. The enemy is not after your money. Not after your the money. The enemy is after your attention. The enemy is after your attention. But isn't that what you seek, ladies, every day? Attention? Because wherever our attention goes, wherever our attention goes, and he's talking to women, he's not talking to men. Men are not lead by no damn emotions. It's where our emotions flow. And this is why you always get in trouble, ladies. Because you're led by your emotions and your feelings. Salute to Floridine Rollo Regular Talk for the super chat. It says, get the likes up, folks. <laughs> Class is in session. Silly women believe in this men in sheep's clothing. <clears throat> this wolf in sheep clothing. Uh, that smooth talker, that smooth talk got them messed up. You prefer that, ladies. Big up to Ringo being balanced. <laughs> and 
And that's what he is. He's a smooth, he's a smooth operator, a smooth talker. You know, he knows how to pander towards women. And women are eating it up on, on TikTok. On his TikTok, it's nothing but women. All he got is female followers, and none of them got a man. All his female followers are single. Desperate for a husband, but they're never going to get one. I promise you, ladies, never. It's never going to happen because if you're not submitted to a righteous man, the Most High is not going to give you one. It's just never going to happen. This is really interesting. He said it's really interesting. In verse 22, this is the creation of the woman, Eve. But you don't hear Eve coming into the earth saying, where's my man? That's dumb. What do you mean Eve said, where's my man? The Most High created her for the man. This is how you know that this pastor is of the devil. This pastor is of the devil, y'all. Let me see if I can pull that up. It says, because he said in, in verse 22, it says, And the rib which the Lord God hath taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. What is this guy talking about? He's trying to use the independent woman spirit nonsense to put on you sisters today. And this is why you ladies can never be successful in relationships. And this is why I tell guys, your only purpose right now is recreational use. Y'all keep getting mad at me. I'm not telling guys to go out here and use you because they can't. You allow it. Your legs can only open up if you allow it. I cannot go and force myself on a woman or I'm going to be in prison. Any woman that I ever been with, trust and believe she opened that door. Not me. I can't open the door, fam. She has to open that door. You see? The Bible says that he brought the woman to the man, not the other way around. So what is this pork chop eating pastor saying? Because it makes no sense. It makes absolutely no sense what he's saying. He's pandering towards women, and this is very, very dangerous. Listen to what he said. Verse 22, this is the creation of the woman, Eve. But you don't hear Eve coming into the earth saying, where's my man? <laughs> huh? Am I reading it right? No, you're not reading it right because you're a big dummy. The Bible clearly says that he brought the woman unto the man. So what is this guy talking about? And women laughing in the church. Why? Because they don't read the Bible. They don't read the Bible, y'all. The Bible is very clear. It says in verse 20, And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and help meet for him. Okay, verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh thereof. So the Most High took one of his ribs. And verse 22, And the rib which the, which the Lord God hath taken from man, made he a woman. So the woman wasn't created, she was made. Uh-oh. The woman was not created. So the pastor lied. The woman was made. She was made from a man's rib. She was not created. The man was created in the image and likeness of God. Uh-oh. Oh, man. Ladies and gentlemen, I will submit to you that men are created in the image and likeness of God, not women. For all you religious folks in the back, man was created in the image and likeness of God, not the woman. Did you get that? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. See, for a long time, women been thinking that they're a goddess and they're this and they're that. No. You are not. You're the weaker vessel, the Bible says, remember? You're the weaker vessel. You're the weaker vessel, fam. Look. 
you have to understand something. You, as a woman, are the weaker vessel. Which means you're in danger. You need protection. It's easy to deceive you. The man was created in the image and likeness of God. You were made from his rib. The man was formed from the dust of the ground, not you. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Man was created from the dust of the ground, not the woman. You were created from a rib. You were created from a rib, which mean you need a head. You're a part of a man's body. Oh, man. Ladies, you are a part of a man's body. You came out of him. You're a part of a man's body acting as if though you're the head of the house. This is why so many women are missing the mark today because they're out here trying to establish themselves because they got a job, they got a career, they got a house and a car. They figure they're above the man. And this is why we got so many problems. Man was created from the dust of the ground. Not you ladies. Always remember that, y'all. Because these ladies always get, they always getting mad, fam. Always getting mad. They hate the truth. They hate this truth, fam. Let's get back to the tape. It says the man said, Eve came into the earth. Watch this. Adam was the one who was broken. Nowhere in the text does it say that Adam was broken. Nowhere in the creation process does it say Adam was broken. He's lying. Eve came into the earth whole. That's a lie. Eve did not come into the, wor the world whole. She came into the earth with a purpose to serve her husband. What is this guy talking about? She had both ribs. <laughs> Society. Notice this man says she had both ribs. While excluding the fact that she was made from Adam's rib. And notice, ladies and gentlemen, the women in the church are clapping and cheering. You know why? Because they don't read the Bible. The women do not read. Women don't read, guys. Believe it or not, women never open the Bible. Majority of the women watching me right now, they never read the Bible. Bible stay closed. Only time they read the Bible is when I post a scripture in my video. That's the only time they see a Bible. That's why they'd be excited and shocked when they see the scriptures. Wants women to believe you're broken if you're not with somebody. Mm. But God says the woman came into the earth complete. Not the Bible does not say that the woman came into the earth complete. That's blasphemy. He's lying. It does not say that in the book. The Bible says that husbands are to dwell with their wives according to knowledge. She don't come into the earth whole or complete. That's crazy. But again, he's telling women the Bible said this, but he didn't even bring out no scripture. There's no scripture that says that. Seeking or needing anyone. He said that the scripture says that a woman have no need of anyone. Population control. You can't see what's happening. These charlatans, these snake oil salesmen, these pork chop eating pastors, all they do is lie. And this is coming from a man that got divorced from Megan Good. This is the same guy that got divorced, y'all, from Megan Good. An industry 304 that been around the block. All the rappers, all the actors, everybody done had their way with her. And then he wifed her up, took up the scraps, took her down the aisle to waste his time, only to get divorced. 
But he's trying to tell you ladies that you're whole. Make it make sense. Or anything. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but you got to stand in your power. You stand in your power, he says. Woman, you don't got no power. You don't got no power. None. But see, this is what society teaches you. They make you feel like you, you're powerful. If you're powerful, why you and your baby daddy ain't together? If you're so powerful, why your body count is through the roof? If you're so powerful, why you keep opening your legs for the wrong guys every single time? If you're so educated and powerful and great and righteous, why you keep making bad decisions? I would expect a quality woman to make good decisions. The truth is, ladies, you can't make good decisions. Women are naturally never making good decisions. This is why you need a man's guidance. See, my wife always make good decisions. You know why? I teach her. I teach her how to make decisions. I teach her wisdom. All you ladies have this mindset, so hold up. A woman can't think for herself? No, she can't. She can't think for herself. If you leave a woman to think for herself, she'll kill herself and the family and the kids. No. If you're a woman and you got a husband, your, your husband's job is to think and lead the family. She got to know her position and what her job is. My job is to do all the thinking. My job is to say what needs to be done. Just like when you go to your job, it is not for you to think. It is for the company and the supervisors to give you your task for the day. Right or wrong? Am I lying? Am I lying? Ladies, when you go to your fucking job, do you go there and tell your supervisor what you're going to do? Or you do what the fuck they tell you to do? Who's doing the thinking at the job? When you go to your job, ladies, do you go there thinking for yourself or you go there to do what the job tell you to do? You listen to who's in charge. You don't go there talking your own talk. You don't go there walking your own walk. You do and follow what your schedule says and that's final. So don't look at me sideways when I say when you're a wife, you need to be listening to your man. Because he's the one that's leading this household. He's the head, not you. And you see, guys, notice this. When I said what I said previously, I could just see the women. What? A woman can't think for herself? What? What? Go to your job and think for yourself. Go to your job and think for yourself. Walk into your job and say, look, I'm not doing nothing. I'm thinking for myself. Watch what happened. Your supervisor going to come in that room. He going to look at you and be like, uh, Sharice, Shirley, Daphne, Jasmine, uh, what are you doing? Oh, I'm thinking for myself. I don't feel like working. Come to my office real quick. And he's going to write you up. You're going to get that memo. And you're going to keep getting memos until you get up on a general and then they're going to bring you down to human resources and they're going to fire you. You're going to be fired. See, I have a problem, ladies, with how you serve your company, but you don't serve a man in that capacity. You'll go to your job, kiss ass, right? You will lick boots. You'll do everything your supervisor tell you. You'll buy coffee. You'll get the faxes. You'll, you'll, make the phone calls you'll you'll uh print out the papers you'll go the extra mile you'll even stay and do overtime because they ask you if you can stay for an extra hour but when it comes to a man you don't believe you're supposed to serve him but you serve your job and you're wondering why you don't got a husband it's because you're more committed to your job than you are family you have failed in life and it's because of pastors like Devin Franklin that's leading you astray. So don't get mad at me when I say you're supposed to be following the orders of your man. He's the leader. Of course, as a woman, you think for yourself in terms of the normal things you do every day. But when it comes to running the household, when it comes to leadership, you ain't running shit. That man is. Any woman that's under my guidance and leadership, she's going to do what the fuck I tell her to do. Or she can hit the fucking road. What the hell I look like? What I look like having women around me 
enjoying my company, my protection, my guidance and wisdom, and she's not listening to me. Show me a company that's going to hire workers that don't listen. Show me a supervisor that the workers are not listening to the supervisor. You're going to get in trouble. So what makes, the, what makes you think you're not going to get in trouble with a man if you're not listening to anything he say? Because this is why you ladies don't got no man. Because all I'm doing is taking things you do every day, flipping it on you to make you see you're in error. Because if you can go to your job and serve your boss and your supervisor and kiss ass, why when you go home, you don't feel a man deserves any sort of respect? You buy everybody lunch on the job, but you don't, you don't cook for your husband? Come on now. That's crazy. But this is what's going down in these streets because of pastors like this. A one of one. There's nothing wrong with you if you're not with somebody. You as a woman are complete. Notice what he's trying to do. He's trying to make women feel that you are complete by yourself. In other words, being single is normal. Now, you know what he's really trying to do, ladies and gentlemen? I'm going to tell you what the pastor is doing because the majority of Christian churches are doing this. Because the majority of you ladies are single right now, churches want you to be comfortable being single as of though it's the will of God for you to be single. But yet all of you have a rose toy or some sort of contraction that you're playing yourself with. Now, if you're a woman that served God, right, why you got a rose toy? Why you play with yourself if being single is the will of God for you? If you're so complete and whole, why are you trying to sexually gratify yourself? You trying to sexually gratify yourself is more proof that you need a man in your life so he can fuck you. That's what you need. By the pure fact as a woman that you have these sexual desires is more proof that you need a man to blow your back out. You understand? Your body is not lying to you. Your body is telling you that you need a man. But the pastor is telling you that you're good being single. Why? Because the majority of women in these churches are single. You go to any Christian church, all the women are single. None of them are married. There are hardly any men in the church. Most of the guys play for the Rainbow Coalition. You go in any of these Christian churches, the majority of the men play for the Rainbow Coalition. And all of the women are single. All of them. But the pastor's telling you garbage like this to make you feel comfortable being alone. You're not with somebody. Mm. But God says the woman came into the earth complete. There is no scripture in the Bible of God saying that the woman came into the earth complete. There is no scripture. There is absolutely no scripture in the Bible where God said that the woman came into the earth complete. That's a lie. Not seeking or needing anyone. He said that there is scripture in the Bible where God said that the woman have no need of anyone. That's a lie. <laughs> That's a lie. And people believe it. And because he has an audience of nothing but females, he's pandering towards them. Why? Because the majority of women in the church are independent. I don't need a man. I can do bad by myself. Imagine, ladies, he's telling you that you have no need of a man. When the Bible the Bible says why you were created. Let me see if I can get that scripture. Let me see. Um, da, 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 da. Where in the world is that scripture? Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 9. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. Uh-oh. So the woman was made for the man. But the pastor said you don't have no need of a man. Pastor said you have no need of a man, that you're complete. But the Bible says the man was not created for the woman, but the woman for the man. The only reason why you inhale and exhale, ladies, you were created by God for a man to breed up, to protect and provide for. That's why you were created, to be a helpmate to a righteous man, not Pookie, not Ray Ray. But you keep giving your body to these sorry brothers out here. And then you get mad at all men as if though all of us brothers ain't ish when you're the one making the conscious decision to open your legs for toxic men. Let it make sense.
Let it make sense, yeah? For anything. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but you got to stand in your power. You are one of one. There's nothing wrong with you if you're not with somebody. Notice that. He said there's nothing wrong with you if you're not with somebody. The entire Christian church is single, fam. All of the women in the church single. But they all sleeping around with different men. Let it make sense, y'all. In the Christian church, the majority of all the women are single, but they all have sneaky links outside of their church. You as a woman are complete. You're whole. Coming from a man that got a divorce from Megan Good. This same guy is telling you that you good. Everything's okay with you. But he got a divorce from Megan Good. And I don't know who filed, but I can guarantee you it was Megan Good. And if I was a betting man, I would say she pretty much got a divorce. Let me let me look that up. Because I was looking at some article earlier that was uh, talking about how she was confused after the divorce and all this other mess um let me see if i can read this thing real quick for you okay amid her divorce from devon franklin megan good reveals she was left devastated i didn't know what i should do megan good said she was left devastated when uh she got divorced from Devin Franklin. She didn't expect that what happened with her parents would happen to her. So basically, Megan Good's parents also divorced after a certain amount of years. It goes on and it says, Megan Good recently spoke about the challenges she faced after her split from Devin Franklin. She revealed that the decision to divorce was not hers and that she was left devastated, unsure of what to do next. Megan was candid about the difficulties she faced after the marriage expression that she did not expect what happened between her parents to happen between her and Devin. The couple had been together for nine years before their separation. In an interview, Megan stated that she is now open to relationships and finding love. Now, what's crazy about this, ladies and gentlemen, is Megan said that she is open to relationships, right? And finding love. Let me get the scriptures. Let me go and show you the scriptures, right? Let me see. She, let me see, she shall. All right, let's pull this up. Um... see okay all right so we're gonna get the book of romans in here because she says she's open to relationships i want to see what the bible has to say about that i want to see what the bible says about that because you know these women they're all adulteresses this is what they do you know adulteresses fam that's all they know it's really sad out here but this is where this is the world we live in we live in a land of whoredom right okay now uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Okay. Ba, 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 ba. All right. So we're going to read from verse one to three. All right. Let me, let me put this on the screen for you. Now, um, we're going to read from the book of Romans chapter seven, verse one to three. Now, again, in this particular article that I'm reading here, it says Megan stated that she is now open to dating, like relationships and finding love. Right? Let's see what the Bible says about that. Let's see what the Bible says. Right? Okay. According to the book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 1 to 3. This is how I know that the majority of you ladies that are viewing right now are all adulteresses and in sin. All of you. That's right. The Bible says, Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the man, how that the law have dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband. How long, Ringo? So long as he liveth. What? So hold up, Ringo. You telling me that a woman is bound by the law to her husband as long as her husband is alive? That's what the Bible says. It says, for the woman which hath an husband 
is bound by the law to her husband, so long as he liveth. But if her husband be dead, 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 but if her husband be what, Ringo? Dead. She is loose from the law of her husband. So then, if her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. Amen. Amen. But Megan said that she is now open to relationships and finding love. Can't find no love, Megan. The Bible says that as long as your husband live, you cannot marry another man. It says, so then if while her husband liveth and uh, Devin is still alive, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. Ladies, do you see how, do you see the severity in this issue? See, this is why all you ladies that love sleeping around, talking about you independent, you living your best life, you're adulteresses. And you're going to be judged by God severely for your sins. You can't escape this judgment. And this is why a lot of ladies, when they come to the platform, they don't like me. Why? Because I'm opening up these, the Bible. Now, is Devin going to tell you this? Devin is not going to show you these scriptures. The Bible says, so then, if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law so that she is no adulteress though she be married to another man. So how could a woman be married to another man? Only if her husband dies. So all of this stuff about you getting a divorce, <laughs> if you got a divorce woman, the Bible also has scripture in there where it tells you to either remain unmarried or be reconciled back to your husband. It don't say go find another boo. Because if you do, you're an adulteress because your husband is still living. Do you see how serious this is? This is not a game. But you ladies going to still go out there and open them legs, right? You're going to still open them legs up for another guy. If your husband is alive, you cannot go marry a new boo. Because that man is still living. You're bound by the law. See, you thought that you could sleep around like a man. I told you, ladies, men have the God-given right to have more than one wife. It's all throughout the Bible. Men of the Most High have always had more than one wife. This is a fact. But you ladies, you want to be men. And because society has lied to you and told you that you're sexually liberated, you go out here giving your box to every man that come by. And this is why you're defiled. This is why. This is why you got so much trauma and issues and mental problems. It's because of the men you sleep with. I can guarantee you, ladies, any sort of trauma, hurt, pain, issues, anxiety is due to the men you slept with. There's no other way to put it. You understand? Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. See, ladies, you don't know the law. You're ignorant of the scriptures. I'm trying to teach you it. Devin don't teach you the Bible. I teach you the Bible, but you hate me. Devin lies to you, but you love him. Think about it. Think about what's going on, fam. The scripture says, Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. So in order for women to know the law, their husband got to teach them. How that, the, how that the law has dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband. <laughs> so long as he liveth. What? Yeah, so once you get married to that man, you're supposed to be that man's wife for life. And the only way you can remarry is if your husband die. Why? So the soul tie can die. But see, ladies, you don't do that. You get married, right? Then you file for divorce. You get with another guy, right? And then you break up. And then you get with another guy, then you break up, you get with another guy, then you break up, another guy 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 break up. And now you're traumatized and you're trying to figure out why you have all these problems. Because you have defiled your spirit. 
For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if her husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. See, the only way you can remarry is if you are loose from the law. And the only way that can happen is if the husband be dead. That's the only time you can say you're going to find a new boo. So back to the article, Megan stated she is now open to relationships and finding love. While the split was undoubtedly difficult, she is looking forward to the future and moving on from this chapter in her life. See, she can't move on, but this is what women do. This is why most of these women are adulteresses. And then a lot of you guys, when you get with them, now you're sleeping with another man's wife and it just creates a whole bunch of mess and whoredom. See? And this is what's going on. In her Essence solo cover interview, Megan Good opens up about her divorce from Devin Franklin and the challenges she faced as a result of the fallout. She said, It is nothing that I would ever have chosen. And when I realized that it was happening, I was devastated. I was like, this is me, Lord. I did everything that I could do to the best of my abilities. I don't understand why I did all these things. And then this is my end result. See, she's saying that she did all these things, Lord. But think about the scriptures that I gave you in the beginning. The Bible says that women shall be pretty much saved in childbearing. They shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in the faith. Now, I don't know their personal marital, marital issues or whatever the case is, but I want to throw a question out there. Did Devin and uh, Megan Good have children? Yes or no? Did Megan Good and Devin have children? <laughs> no. Say it ain't so. I see two no's, three no's. Wow. So let me get this straight. They were married for nine years and don't got no children. Are, are you kidding me? <laughs> see, this is what I'm saying. It's like, what are you getting married for if you ain't fucking so you can have some damn children? Like, I don't get it. Listen. Hey, listen, I don't want to have a woman around me if I'm not breeding her up, fam. That's the whole purpose of getting with a woman. So that she can bring forth babies. So we can build legacy, family, growth. You understand? Community. It makes no sense to be married for nine years and you ain't get a woman pregnant. How could Devin be with his woman and he's sleeping with her and she's not getting pregnant, y'all? Come on now. That's a sign right there that she for the streets. Her womb is most likely dead, bro. I don't want to hear that nonsense about not all women can have kids. I don't, I'm tired of hearing that excuse that women always use. And if you're a woman and you can't have kids, that's your fucking problem. Seriously. Let's stop using that as an excuse. You understand? Let's stop using that. The only fucking purpose for making a woman a wife is to have a family. That's it. Because let me explain something, guys. Let me explain something now. Let me explain something now because now I'm getting heated. Because here's the thing. A lot of you ladies love pushing this monogamy bullshit, right? Talking about, oh, you can only be with me. You can't have no other woman. So if you're a woman and you can't have no fucking kids and I make you my goddamn wife, I'm going out there and fuck other women to produce some children. The fuck you think this is? Real fit, man. Yo, let me, let me tell you something. See, this is the problem. You got women out here, right, that because they can't have no kids, they expect you as a man to be in some monogamous nonsense with them and not having no, no children being reproduced. The woman is crying. If you, you cheating on me. Woman, you can't even produce babies for me. What are you talking about? I'm going out there and fuck some other woman. What are you talking about? You got women out here that know they can't have no damn kids for a man. They know that and would lead a man on acting as acting as if though she's so damn special, not making herself of understanding of where she's at. How you married for nine years and you ain't got no children and you a pastor? How? That makes no sense. I don't want to hear nothing. The reason why these women can't have no fucking kids is because they got so many goddamn abortions. That's why.
That's why! That's why! You understand? That is why every woman can have a child. I don't want to hear nothing. Abraham's wife had a baby in her old age. Save me the damn tears. You ladies don't follow God, because if you followed God, you'll be praying like Abraham's wife to have a baby. You ladies are lying. All of you can have kids, and if you can't, it's because you destroyed your womb in this world. You destroyed your womb. Don't you know? Put a one in the chat if you know that a woman can destroy her ability to bear children. Do you know that if a woman go out there having a bunch of abortions and all sorts of stuff, she ruins her chances of having children? I don't want to hear nothing from these women when it comes to, oh, you know, some women can't have babies. That's because you fucked your body up. You went out there doing all the sorts of dirt and now you can't have kids because you were 3 foreign. Don't blame me. You were out there doing dirt. Now you mad at the world because you were out there sleeping around with everybody. Any woman at the sound of my voice that can't have no damn kids had a bunch of, ab of abortions and you just exposing yourself. You exposing yourself. Because every woman was born with a womb to bring forth life. I don't want to hear nothing. No excuses. No drama. I don't got no time for none of this mess. Every woman at the sound of my voice can bear children. If you can't, it's because you destroyed your womb. Because you were out there aborting babies, deleting your kids, living your best life, and that's why you don't got no kids. Not because you were chaste and discreet and, you know, you don't got no high body count. No, you were in them streets. That's why you don't. Listen, guys, a lot of times when you got women that are in their 30s and 40s, they don't got no kids. A lot of times these women back in the day, fam, they were in them streets living a best life, doing all sorts of dirt. Seriously, dirt. Going to the clinic, getting rid of babies, bro. These are facts. I know sisters that destroy their womb. They can't even produce life anymore, bro. Their womb is dead because they got so many abortions. They got so many abortions, bro. Their body cannot, it cannot hold a baby anymore. It can't. And these are the things that ladies don't talk about. So what they try to do is give you some damn excuse about, you know, some women, you know, they just don't, they just can't have a baby. Well, how do you know you can't have a baby? That means you've been getting fucked for a long time because that's the only reason why you know you can't have a baby. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Come on. Come on. How as a woman, you know you can't have a baby. Why? Because you've been in them streets. Because if you're a woman and you're not intimate with nobody, how do you know you can't have a baby? Uh-oh. See, women that know they can't have babies are women that have been in the streets for a very long time. And this is why they keep getting mad at me. They hate me with a passion, fam. All these ladies hate me because I'm this raw. I don't sugarcoat. I don't got time to sugarcoat. I'm here to give you the truth. Raw and uncut. If you're a woman and you cannot produce no babies, you destroyed your womb in your prime. You destroyed your womb. Just that simple. And another thing, if you really serve in God, <laughs> here's another thing, fam. If you really serve in God, how is it that you can't have a baby? So you don't believe that the Most High can get you pregnant with a righteous man? Are you seeing this, guys? Think about this, guys. Ladies will love to say how some ladies can't have babies, as if though they're just born not having babies. <laughs> What's the point of getting married then? What's the point of you being a wife if you're not bringing forth any children for me? It's a waste of marriage. Recreational use. You're just a fuck buddy at this point. Just call me when you want to smash. But me... Uh, treating you with the status of a wife when I'm not having no kids from you makes no sense. You, you should just be a concubine at this point. Real spit. You're just supposed to be a concubine. If you cannot produce any babies, 
concubine is your status. I don't know why women get upset. You don't deserve to be a wife if you can't produce life. If I get with a sister, my first objective is having children with her. That's my objective. What the fuck you here for? <laughs> what are you here for? If you're a youthful sister that got years on you where you are fertile, my goal is breeding you up. That's my goal. I don't know about your goal as a woman, but when I see sisters, my goal is breeding them up. That's my goal. Babies. You know what I mean? That's the whole purpose of life. Now, most of you ladies, you don't want that. You just want to smash. And this is why you're only rec recreational use. This is why a lot of times when guys get into relationships with sisters, normally we want the relationship. But the woman, she just wanted an experience. She wanted some good D. And sometimes you may have an experience with a guy and you might be like, ah, it was whack. I wouldn't say it's whack. I would just say that that experience wasn't up to par the way you expected it to be. Why? Because your heart wasn't really into it. His heart was. And because things didn't go according to plan, that's why you felt some type of way. But if you go into relationships looking for sexual experiences, then that's a sad situation. That means that you sleep around all the time and you judge men after men based on performance. That means you're for the streets. Because I'm going to be honest with you, brothers. A lot of times when women be like, oh, your D game is whack. It's not that your D game is whack. It's that her box game is open. It means that she's ran through. So there's no way to please her anymore because she's been ran through. It's nothing wrong with you. A woman's box is supposed to be, I guess, similar to how a rubber band would stretch. So when a woman is all over the place with different guys, then of course it's going to be difficult for women like that to experience any sort of pair bonding, pleasure, or anything because she's ran through. You know? And normally a lot of times, a lot of these ladies, when they come to you, Oh, I don't got no kids. Yeah, because you got an abortion multiple times. How many of you ladies in the chat are willing to admit the number of times you got an abortion? Crickets. Crickets. Or they'll lie and save all the comments because I don't believe none of you. I don't believe none of you ladies, fam. I'm just being, I'm just keeping it a thousand. I don't believe women, bro. Anytime women speak, I don't believe nothing they say because women lie continually. They lie to hide their their past, their trauma, their issues, and they just they just continually lie and they're never really honest with themselves. And this is why they suffer from so much trauma. This is why when I have conversations with women, I like to open the woman up in terms of conversations and tell the sister to express herself. What is, what's going on with you? You know, talk to me. You know, tell me about yourself, where you came from, what you've been through. You know, I want to know about who you are as a person. You know, I'm not here to, to play any fucking games and bullshit. Like, talk to me, keep it a thousand. You know, don't wear no mask when you're around me because I'm not impressed. I can see through the BS, you know, and I try to get right to the point so the sister can open up and start to talk about her issues and different things, her anxieties, any sort of stress, insecurities and inadequacies, inadequacies and various other th issues. That way we can get all of that stuff out in the open because a lot of women suffer from a lot of issues, man. You know, they suffer from a lot. So if you can get everything in the forefront from the jump, you know, she's going to recognize that you're official because she's like, wow, this guy really opened me up to talk. And I really feel better about a lot of stuff. It's like you made me uh, talk about things that I never shared with nobody. Now you got this sister sharing her life story and it's making her cry almost because of all the things she's been through. And she can't even believe she's crying in front of a man that she just met. But see, when you got that type of ability to talk to women and really make them vibe, now she feel comfortable to talk to you about things that she would never talk to anybody about. But you made her feel comfortable. So she feel like she's in a safe space to express herself. You see, it takes wisdom to do that, guys. You know? But this guy, man, Devin Franklin, is a false pastor, a false prophet, and a very dangerous man. Very, very dangerous. So the article goes on and says she's expressed that she still views Devin as an amazing and lovely individual. She confirms that neither of them had any malicious intent towards each other. See, this is crazy. So basically their divorce was, what, irreconcilable differences? 
it's really dumb that she says that she see him as an amazingly lovely individual. But y'all got a divorce. Sounds like a business relationship to me. Recounting her difficult phase, she said, I struggled with that. I was like, I don't know if I should be celibate now. See, this is a woman talking about she don't know if she should be celibate now when she's been in the streets with everybody. It makes no sense you be celibate, woman. If you've already been in the streets, listen, stop all this celibate stuff because you're not a virgin and you're not pure. You've been defiled already. Get with the most high, repent of your sins, and get it right. But stop acting like you're being celibate, like you're saving yourself for marriage again when you can't even get married according to the Bible because your husband is still living, right? So she talks about how... Uh, if I should be celibate now, I don't know what I should do. I even was at the point early on when I felt, obviously, I still believe in Jesus, but I'm not sure what to believe about anything else anymore. So she's confused. She's totally confused. According to her, the divorce was uh, particularly challenging because she didn't want to replicate her parents' experience. Her parents had been separated after being married for a decade, she said. That was rough because my biggest fear was what happened between my mom and my dad. Wow. So she says her biggest fear. She said her biggest fear. I said she said her biggest fear. That's what she said. Let's see what the Bible says. Let's see what the Bible says. Let's see what the Bible says about that. Because we always love to bring out chapter and verse when we do our lessons. We break everything down thoroughly. All right, let's see what the Bible says about that fear. Uh, Y'all remember Job, right? And I'm not talking about the false story that these Christian pastors teach about how God and the devil made a bet. No, not that BS. There was no bet in heaven. There was none of that nonsense. The Bible says in Job chapter 3, verse 25, for the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. Ladies and gentlemen, I would submit to you that whatever you fear will come to pass. Fear is inverted faith. I said fear is inverted faith. Fear is pretty much worry. Worry and fear are cousins. If you worry about anything, it'll come to pass. Why? Because you're giving attention to something in the negative, which means you're having faith in the devil to bring to pass what you're afraid of. If you fear losing your job, you'll lose your job. If you fear your son going to get shot in these streets, your son is going to get killed. It's just that simple. Whatever you fear is going to happen. If you're walking down the street and you fear somebody going to rob you, somebody's going to rob you. You understand? If you're, if you're out here fearing anything, if you fear your children drowning, getting killed, it's going to happen. Anytime you, hit, you have fear, you got to cast that mess down. You got to cast it down. Let's see what the Bible says. You understand? Let's see what the Bible says about that. Let's see what the Bible says about that, fam, because, you know, a lot of us, we're, we're out here playing this game with fear, and we don't realize that it's causing a lot of damage to us, man. Let's see what the Bible says. Let's see what the Bible says about fear. All right? Let's see. Because you're not supposed to live in fear. The, the Most High didn't give you a spirit of fear. He, he did not do that, fam. Now, notice how I'm flowing through the scriptures, just giving you food to eat. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God has not given us the spirit of fear. So why do we carry fear? We should be of power, love, and of a sound mind. If you're living by fear, that spirit didn't come from God. That came from the devil. And that's what Job had. That's why he lost everything. That's why he lost his family. That's why he lost his wealth. That's why he lost everything because he feared. He feared. If you study the scriptures, I'm not going to go to it. But if you study the book of Job, it says that Job got up every morning to offer burnt offerings, burnt sacrifices unto God because he believed in his heart that his children have sinned and cursed God. Study the book of Job and you'll find it for yourself. He offered up burnt offerings every single day, religiously, going to God with burnt offerings, 
for his children's sins, even though he don't know if they did it or not. But he did that out of fear. Why? Because he knew they had to obey God. So his fear was, if I don't continue doing these offerings, I fear that my children may end up dying. I'm going to lose everything. And that's exactly what happened. It had nothing to do with no damn bet between him and God. Facts. Right? So let me get back to this, uh, this tape here. Let's get back to this tape. Ah, and I gotta say it because I'm tired of us supporting a culture that tries to make women think there's something wrong with them if they're not married. It's just not true. Notice what he's saying, that the culture is basically saying that there's something wrong with women if they're ma not married. And he said it's not true. Ladies, I submit to you that if you're not a wife, something is wrong. Something is wrong. Something is wrong if you're a woman and your legs is open to different guys, right? You're sleeping around, you know, taking D, um, you know, doing fellatio and various other things and servicing men on your nine to five. There's something wrong with that. It's something wrong as a woman to be sexually active with multiple men and you're not a wife. Something is wrong with that. The church, the Christian church, don't want you to feel nothing is wrong because they don't have an answer to why the majority of you ladies are single. They don't got an answer. They're not going to tell you the truth the way I do. See, that pastor pork chop, he's not going to tell you why you're really single. Because if, you, if he did, you won't give no tithes and offerings in the church. You get what I mean? You're not going to be willing to, to, to pay any uh, tithes and, 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 you know, give any offerings, even though you're not supposed to be tithing any uh, money to a pastor. You know, the tithe, according to the Bible, have nothing to do with money. It was livestock, food, vegetation. Only herdsmen, landowners, and farmers paid tithes to the Levites because they didn't have an inheritance. Study the book. and Stop letting these pork chop eating pastors make you feel that you got to give 10% of your paycheck. That's a lie. If you're giving 10% of your earnings from your job to a pastor, you're an idiot. It shows that you don't read the Bible. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I am the first YouTuber on YouTube to literally tell people that the tithing doctrine is false. Anybody that know me from 2006, when I started on my Ringo TV, Ringo for Life channel, I've had many videos regarding the tithing doctrine. You understand? Tithing money to pastors is false doctrine. Even Creflo Dollar came out the other day to confess that all the teachings he had on tithing were misinformation, wasn't true. But then he, he manipulated you again into tithing money right after that by saying that you can tithe money if God put it on your heart to tithe. Still manipulating you. You understand? Let's get back to the tape. The enemy is not after your time. The enemy is not after your money. The enemy is after your attention. The pastor is after your money. The pastor is after your money. Because wherever our attention goes is where our emotions flow. I want to submit for all of our consideration that no matter our relationship status, we're all single. Wow. We're all an individual. Why is this important? Because if you want to be in a couple, a couple is made up of two singles. If the single is weak, the couple is weak too. The couple is only as strong as the singles that make up the couple. And too often in church culture, we're rushing people into being couples when we have not equipped them to be a good single. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. If all of that that he said made sense, why him and Megan Good got a divorce? Obviously, nothing he said works. Boom. If what he said was so good, why, why did him and Megan Good get a divorce? Come on, y'all. If what he said is true. That mean he's not even equipped to teach you anything. He's a false pastor. The singles that make up the couple. And too often in church culture, we're rushing people into being couples when we have not equipped them to be a good single. I don't Notice he said you haven't equipped them to be a good single. So why wasn't Devin Franklin a good single? And why wasn't Megan Good a good single? Why did they get married? This is pure hypocrisy.
The pastor's a fucking hypocrite, y'all. I cannot stand these kind of people, fam. Because they're leading all of our women astray. Ladies, you're following a charlatan who's lying to you. He just told you that in the churches, they're trying to rush people into getting married. But isn't that what he did? So he wasn't a good single? If he's a pastor, how come he wasn't a good single while he was single? It's not making any logical sense. Why Megan Good wasn't a good single? And why they put on this facade like they were so happy during their marriage for nine years? It was a sham, y'all. A total joke. It was an industry marriage, fam. For all you know, this guy is in the closet, fam. He probably on the down low for all you know. You never know, fam. A lot of these guys in the Christian church always marrying women to use as a beard to cover their secret life. Who I'm talking to right now. But, but you got to know that if you are not in a couple, that doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. Because wow. so often we wear a stigma with singleness as if singleness is a disease to be cured from. I got a newsflash for you. There is no cure for singleness because it's not a disease. If it's not a disease, why so many women got rose toys? If it's not a disease, why so many men watch P-O-R-N and masturbate all damn night? It is a problem. Paul said it's better to marry than to burn. It's better to marry than to burn with lust. Why is it that so many women in the church that are single got rose toises and various other contractions and artificial intelligence under their mattresses? Why women have all of these strange objects that they purchase from AliExpress? <laughs> to all you ladies that are in the clouds that got these devices in your house, how come you got all these devices and you supposed to be a Christian woman? Hmm? Come on now. Because he's trying to make you feel that being single is a blessing. But if, it's, if you're so blessed, why are you out there having sexual relations with different men if you're single and in the church? <laughs> single women are not supposed to be having sexual relations. Single women are supposed to be preparing for marriage. But you're not. You're using the title single to sleep around testing out different guys while claiming single. So you're getting the benefits of marriage without the marriage. That's pretty much what women do today. And, and too often we have that stigma and it gets revealed in this question. How many of you heard this question before? Um, why are you still single? Come on, by show of hands. Right? So, so in, inherent in the question is that there's a problem being uncoupled. It is. If you're a woman, 35, 40, 45, 50, and you still don't got no husband, there's a problem. That means that you were in the streets your entire life. It means that you really have no home training from your mom or your dad on what to do and how to prepare. Because there is a problem. You're growing old. Your womb is growing old. And you still don't got no babies? What are you waiting for? There is a problem. But see, in the Christian church, they keeping you single. The Christian church is responsible for keeping women single. You understand? The Christian church keep women single, but they keep in your money too. This is what they do every day. And usually the person that asked the question is the same person that rushed into a couple, not happy themselves. Yeah, he's talking about himself. See, this hypocrite pastor is literally the epitome of a hypocrite who is literally projecting his own sins because he was the one that rushed into a marriage with Megan Good and the marriage didn't work. It was a total failure, a nightmare. But look at what he said, fam. Rewind back the tape. Let's go. Person that rushed into a couple, not happy themselves. Misery loves company. So they're trying to ask you a question to make you feel less than about a status that is part of your divine design. We are all individuals and there's nothing wrong with that. If there was nothing the wrong with that, not listen, listen, if there was nothing wrong with that, right, then we won't be reproducing. There is something wrong because the, the woman was created for the man. You understand? The woman was created to serve and cater to the man to bring forth life. But he wants a world where we're just all single. This is all population control, if you really think about it. These pastors are all 501c3 pastors anyway. So they're with the elite. Their job is to keep you ladies as single and independent as possible. 
Because remember, you don't got no husband guiding you, so all your money is coming into the pastor's hands. Some of you religious women, you tithe every chance you get to a pastor, and you send him thousands of dollars every time. This is what you do because they got you trained. These churches are living good because of women. You know, it's really crazy out here. It's really sick. It's like y'all just allowing these false pastors to mislead you. This guy got a divorce, which mean he contradicted himself with his own message. How could he help you with relationships when he couldn't even help his own marriage, y'all? Fam, I actually have a relationship. I have a whole marriage, a whole family. I got the fucking results, fam. I got the fruits. These fucking keep telling y'all, stop listening to people that don't got no relationship, fam. Just like when you listen to all these females on YouTube, they got all this talk to say, right? But they don't got no man. They got all this advice, but they don't got no kids that they raising. They ain't changing no diapers. They ain't cooking no dinner. But y'all listening to these women. And a lot of you guys, you be supporting all these female platforms, but these women, ain't, they ain't doing no work. How they got all this information, but they not living the life, man. Come on. It's because they're watching my videos. They listen to me. They get the inspiration. They go talk about the same topics. You understand? If you want advice about relationships, and I'm talking about real success, you have to talk and listen to people that got it. Would you take advice from a homeless person on how to get your finances up? Would you listen to topics on financial literacy from a homeless person that's broke? Of course not, because that person is struggling. So why would you take advice about relationships from people that don't even have relationships, people that have been divorced and been failed in life? Why would you take advice from those people? Yeah, they regurgitate other men's talking points. That's what females do all the time on social media. They do. They do. They actually do that. They just regurgitate talking points. And it sounds like these women are very knowledgeable. You would be like, man, is sister really speaking that truth? No, she just watched my videos. That's all. She watched my videos. That's why she speaks the way she speaks. She watched my video. She learned the lingo. She recognized how to move. And because she has a pretty face, big titties, whatever the case is, you're going to go with it. You know, because at the end of the day, women can use their body as an advantage to make you guys look at them. They just got that ability. You know, a little thirst trap here and there. The guys are going to come into the yard. That's just the way it is, guy. Put a pretty face out there. Guys are going to come in. <laughs> it is just the way the nature of men. Men are men are just Weak like that, fam. They just fall for a woman every single time. A brother could come on YouTube and speak this type of truth. Get no support from the brothers. No support from the sisters. But if a woman come on social media and do this, man, guys will be hitting cash apps, super chats all day. Man, we need to protect this sister at all costs. I hear comments like that all the time. Yo, we got to protect this queen at all costs. That queen don't got no husband, bro. Have it ever dawned on you that she's hustling you? Think about that now. So you have a woman have a husband and she's talking and doing whatever she's doing, then, hey, it is what it is, you know? But if a woman don't got no husband, right? And that doesn't mean that if a woman have, a, like, let's say, for example, if a woman have a husband, she could still steal talking points now. She could still steal talking points. Because I'm going to be honest with you, fam. You know, when you have a wife, she has a job. So it's like, I'm not saying women can't do social media. But if a woman is on social media every single minute, and it's like she's there all the time, but she got a man, something wrong, bro. Something wrong with that picture. Because I'm trying to figure out how she got all that free time to be online when she's supposed to be serving her man and, and raising kids. You know? It, it, it doesn't make any sense. So the only women that normally do that is women that got no man. Or a woman that just don't do no wifely duties. 
She don't cook. She don't clean. She don't raise no kids. So she got time to be just like a celebrity. You know, like how these singers, like the uh, Beyonce's and all these other women that be out here just in the, the public rather than raising their kids. It's really crazy, man. But, uh, hey, it is what it is, man. I'm going to get up on out of here. I just wanted to share my thoughts about this particular clip. You know what I mean? I already had this video prepared in terms of coming on to talk about this. And then people started sending me the same clip. But I've been had it already. You know what I'm saying? You have to understand my ears to the streets already. So <laughs> I see what's going on already. But uh, yeah, there you have it, fam. Devin Franklin. Proof Devin Franklin is a false teacher. This is proof. This man completely twisted the Bible, said that there are things written of in the Bible that is not in there. Totally lied. The Bible clearly says do not add or take away from the scriptures. But these type of charlatans, pork chop eating pastors, right? They'll do anything to build a following of women. I can guarantee you, fam, everybody that followed Devin is a woman. Everybody. Everybody that followed this man is a woman. No men follow him unless they work for the Rainbow Coalition. No man that is a masculine man follow this guy. Men that are in the truth do not follow Devin Franklin because we know he's a false teacher. You know, we know he false. Salute to Matthew for the $5 support. Appreciate you. Said it's, you have my support, Mr. Ringo. Love your classes, even at work. Appreciate you. Yeah, these videos will get you through your day at work, fam. I'm telling you, man. You just have the video on. Even if you're not watching it, even if you're just, like, listening, videos will get you through all sorts of, like, jobs, whether you're doing, like, mechanic work, uh, driving, um, whatever the situation is. And you have one uh, earbud in, and you're just kind of listening. Man, before you know it, it's lunchtime. Before you know it, it's time to clock out. <laughs> Seriously, fam. You know? But, uh, hey, I'm going to get up on out of here. Um, I'm going to be back on later. I'm going to talk about that situation with the uh, Hawaii fires and whatnot. I'm going to talk about that situation and uh, share my thoughts on it. You know? But, uh, yeah, this guy right here is dangerous, y'all. Stay away from this guy. Very, very dangerous individual. Um, let me see. Da, 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 da. Shout out to... I'm not sure if I shouted these people out yesterday. I think I did. I had to. Um, I think I did. I'm not sure if I shouted out. Diane... Kyra for the 10 and the 10. I think I did, though. Quentin for the 20. Aziza for the 5. Forever Studios for the $40 support. V Dub Man for the $80 support. Appreciate y'all sponsoring the show. So, um, we gonna, we're going to get up on out of here, y'all. Shout out to, I seen the cash I've just come in. Ken, Ken, Kenya. Kenya for the $10 support says great content. Appreciate you. I'm going to be back later on. We're going to talk about the Hawaii situation. I'm going to share my thoughts about that, what, I, what I'm seeing and whatnot. Um, other brothers talked about it. I'm going to share my perspective on what I'm seeing. Um, I think what I'm going to say may you know, make a lot of people think because I'm going to come from a, a different perspective on what I see happening because it's a pattern. It, this is a pattern. And I realize that something's going on in the earth and it's more sinister than we can phantom. So I'm going to talk about that um, later on. Um, let me see. Okay, so yeah, make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe. Let's get these likes to a thousand. Share the videos with everybody. You know what I mean? Share it on Facebook, Twitter. Let people know about the platform so they could come over. Ringo TV Reactions, the best reactionary channel on YouTube, hands down. And I'll catch you all in the next one, fam. So y'all take care. 
Um, remember, call your mom, call your dad, tell them you love them. Um, you know what I mean? It's always good to do that. Make that a habit in your life to call your folks and let them know that you, uh, you care and, um, honor thy mother and thy father that thy days may be long upon the earth. That being said, I'm out of here, fam. Peace and blessings. We out. If you like our content, consider supporting via Cash App at dollar sign Ringo TV Raw. Become a patron on Patreon.com for exclusive video content not shown on YouTube. You could also support through PayPal at paypal.me slash Ringo TV Raw. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell to be notified of new content. Follow me on Instagram at Ringo TV Raw. This is Ringo TV Reactions. The only channel on YouTube bringing you the truth 100% raw and uncut. I'm out. Peace.